Welcome to China, a country with an ever-growing presence on the world judo scene. This winter, the city of Guangzhou in the southern province of Guangdong will play host to the final event on the 2018 World Judo Tour, the World Masters. The city was primed for this unique invitational, which pits the top 16 in each category against each other. It saw some of the sport's biggest superstars in action, including world champion Guram Tushishvili, who we nabbed for our latest Meet Your Judoka feature. Ahead of some fantastic action, IJF President Mr. Marius Visser opened the event as part of a fantastic opening ceremony to whet the judo world's appetite for this final instalment of the 2018 season. Which of the sports superstars would end the year on a high? We start with the women's under 48 kilogram division, where the fast improving Distria Krasniki was looking good. The Kosovan judoka has made 2018 something of a breakout year in the division and rounded it off by making the final in Guangzhou, showcasing some stylish judo throughout the day. Standing between Krasniki and the gold was former world champion Kondo Ami of Japan. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Final of the under 48 kilos category then, Krasniki against Kondo, the former world champion. And Krasniki will be wanting to win this, obviously, for big points, but Kondo will be wanting to prove that she's the number one in Japan. Good Tamanagi there. Krasniki does well to defend it. Oh, Sunagari! Oh, it's all over! And it's all over before it's even begun because Krasniki has caught her on the rebound. And it was Kondo that did the Tomanagi. As she comes in for the Tomanagi, as she comes up, then Krasniki catches her on the way back up and throws with the biggest Osoto. She actually catches the same lapel and the same side, should I say, and the Osoto there buries the former world champion and Kondo doesn't lose very often like that. Brilliant stuff from Krasniki and Kosovo have a gold medal. Big smile on her face says it all, but that was a really good performance. To present the prizes, the president of the IJF, Mr. Marius Visa, and wow, Krasniki, you can only say that she's just had the most remarkable year and she ends it with a well-deserved gold medal. The men's under 60 kilogram division saw Georgia's Amiran Papinashvili on breathtaking form as he blitzed his way to the final with some awe-inspiring judo. After stunning Mongolia's Dashtavar Amartuvshin at the semi-final stage, a gold medal showdown with Russian world silver medalist Robert Mushvidabadze awaited him. It was a tense affair, with neither athlete able to break the deadlock in regular time. The World Masters title would be decided in golden score. Minute into golden score, Mishvidabadze, I'd say, well, just having to fight hard for the grips here. Papinashvili always looking dangerous. Now, something's going to happen. Oh, well, he took the chance there and he's paid the price. Papinashvili went for it and he's been going for it all day. And, well, this time it didn't quite work out. Mishvidabadze was waiting for it. He stops it dead. Look at that changes the direction and then drives off the back leg there to get the score. He knew it had gone. Papinashvili went for the technique that was going to score, that was going to win him the gold medal, but it was never to be. Mishvidabadze scores and wins the gold medal for Russia. One weight up at under 66 kilograms, Japan's Maruyama Joshira was in action, fresh from a major win against his country's wonder kid, Abe Hifumi in the final of the Osaka Grand Slam. Having beaten the double world champion in a head-to-head, -head, his sights were now set on further proving his credentials with another major international title. After a stunning Uchimata against Moldova's Denis Fieri in his opening contest, he then squared off against defending Masters champion Ganbold Kerlin of Mongolia at the quarter-final stage. Coming up to the end of the contest, Mariama going forwards all the time. Ganbold doesn't want him to catch that sleeve. And now he's got it! Oh, and that's why he didn't want him to catch the sleeve. That Uchimata was absolutely classic. Look at that support leg there. It just takes the place of the other leg. 
and he just goes right the way up and over onto his back. And that was classical Uchimata that takes him through to the semi-final. Israel's Baruch Shmailov would meet Maruyama in the final. Maruyama just wants that grip, doesn't he? He wants the sleeve, he wants the lapel, but look at his stance. I love the fact that he's just so upright. Look at the Uchimata! Shmailov goes over the top there. And now, wow, he's got to come forwards now, Shmailov, because Mariyama has scored a Wazari with that Uchimata. That is so dangerous. Because as soon as he gets the line, he's in like a shot. Look at the range there that he gets with that. Didn't quite put him flat on his back, but he gets the Wazari. Now into the last 30 seconds. Got to hold on to the Wazari. And he'll still look for the Ippon. I'm sure of that. Mariyama. Oh, and he gets the Wazari. I was at Ippon. And that was brilliant. The Sodi Surakamigoshi went across on the other side. It was almost Ukigoshi, wasn't it? He just catches that first hit. And it was off the Sodi grip. Referee gives Ippon, but we know that it was a Wazari. Look at the landing. Flat on his side, and he gets the other Wazari. It was all over anyway. Wazari, I was at upon, and he is the champion. Mariama shows brilliance. The under 90 kilogram division gave judo fans a chance to see reigning world champion Nicolas Shirazadishvili showcasing his exciting judo as the Spaniard stormed through to the final. There he would meet Christian Toth of Hungary in a battle of two of judo's real gentlemen. Both good friends, they were chatting and joking together just moments before their gold medal showdown. But once on the tatami, it was all business. Shrestashvili won't want to get another penalty on there. But look how he's dominating the grips here on Toff. Toff can't get near him. And he tries to see an Aggie, but gets taken back. Shrestashvili gets a Wazari, and that was beautifully taken. He was almost waiting for it. Waiting for the Sianagi, and then he changes the direction, takes him onto his side for a Wazari. Shrestashvili, great stance, and he really took command of the whole thing. Shrestashvili still going forwards, he's looking to finish this, and Toff doesn't know what to do with him. Just the sheer range, but absolutely, he is the man on form. Sodi Surikomigoshi, and he's taking him over there, and Toff just didn't stand a chance. The world champion showing why he is the newly crowned world champion, just showing absolute class, and that was brilliant. Toff really is experienced. He is no pushover for anybody, but he had no chance in this contest. The first was Ari. Well, he knew he had to come forwards, but it was Shrestashvili that wasn't happy with it. He just wanted to finish the contest off and he does it in style. They come together, big, big pals, and it's all over now. This man here showed real class and why he is world champion. There was another world champion in action at over 100 kilograms, as Georgia's Guram Tushishvili looked to bounce back to winning ways after a disappointing showing at the Osaka Grand Slam. We caught up with Guram for our latest Meet Your Judoka feature. I started judo when I was 10 years old. I was a very energetic child, so my parents decided that I should start judo. All our family was involved in judo, and the decision for me to start was made according to that tradition. Later, judo became everything for me, and I started practicing as a professional judo player. My favorite throw is drop C and Aggie. I've practiced this throw since childhood, and my teacher worked very hard with me on this throw. I think it's very successful against heavyweights, because it is hard to counter, and I think I execute it quite well. I don't really have any planned attacks in Neuwaza. It all depends on the situation. Often, I instinctively go for Osaikami or for Juji Kitama. 
My best memory was the 2018 World Championships in Baku, where I became a world champion. I trained so hard and was so happy that I finally got the gold medal. There were so many Georgian fans in the arena supporting me and waving flags. It was really unforgettable. Of course I like music very much, but I don't have any special favourite genre of music. I do like Georgian folk music and often listen to it before the contests. My favourite movie is Terminator. Oh, wait, it's Gladiator. <laughs> I like any kind of traditional Georgian food. My hidden talent is playing football. When I have some free time, I play football. And I think I play rather well, actually. My favourite judo player to watch is my friend Becca Gaviniashvili. I can always watch his techniques because his style is so different and interesting. He can do very nice and effective throws in my opinion. My heroes in life are my parents. If I was not a judoka, first, I would not be a world champion, but I would be just a human being, a good person. When I finish my active career in judo, I have a desire to stay in judo and share my experience with the younger generation. Judo is special for me because it has given me so many good memories. This sport gives me a special feeling. I can't exist without judo. And if not for judo, I would not be the person who I am today. In Guangzhou, Tushishvili meant business. He was out to defend his World Masters title and show the world that he deserved the World Champion's red back patch. And he looked back to himself again as he progressed to the final in style, with two big Ippon wins along the way. Trying to stop him from taking gold back to Georgia was the giant Brazilian Rafael Silva. Silva had the weight advantage, but would he have the speed to stop Tushishvili? Tushishvili still coming forwards, non-stop attack, all day he's been the same. The newly crowned world champion, but uh, he wants to make up for his loss in Osaka, that's for sure. Now then, he's taken Silva down. Does he get a score for that? Took him onto his side, I thought, but he's going to try and get him into the hold down. And he gets him over. Rafael Silva is in trouble. And he goes onto the other arm, and he's just trying to hold him with the arm. Rafael Silva not giving up. He's not going to let it go. And now, can he readjust the balance? He does. Look at the hips pressing down there now. And he has a little look at the clock. Can he hold it off? He's still got control and he gets the hip on. And Tushishvili wins the gold medal. The world champion shows his class here against the much bigger Rafael Silva. But he was non-stop attack. I thought he scored for that. Wasn't quite there. But his transition into Newaza was superb. And he gets him in, well, an unusual hold. He goes straight onto the arm. And Rafael Silva just realizes that he hasn't got his head under control. He tries to get out. But in the end, look at that arm there. Controlling the upper part of the body, Rafael Silva realizes that it's gone away from him. And this man here, the world champion, has finished the year on top of the world yet again at the World Masters. Under 73 kilogram world champion An Chang Grim started well in his first outing since Baku, seeing off the inform Akil Jakova of Kosovo at the quarter final stage. However, the Korean then came unstuck in his semi final contest with Rustam Orujov of Azerbaijan as he was caught for a Wazari. There was another upset on the other side of the draw as Canada's Artem Margeladon defeated Japan's former world champion Hashimoto Soichi as he reached the final to face Orujov. 
it was the Aziri who emerged victorious. Once again, a scrappy Wazari, enough to give him the win. It ended a fallow period for Orijov that has lasted since his last World Judo Tour win, back in September 2017. Up one weight at under 81 kilograms, Japan were triumphant, as Sasaki Takeshi took gold. He defeated Russia's Aslan Lapinagov in the final by Wazari to end the year on a high. 2019 could well be the year of Sasaki. There was a gold for Georgia to cheer at under 100 kilograms, with Valam Lipitaliani defending his master's title and firmly securing his place as world number one. Japan were prolific in the female divisions, starting at under 52 kilograms, where Tsunoda Natsumi defeated Amandine Bouchard of France to take gold. Up one weight at under 57 kilograms, reigning world champion Yoshida Tsukasa came through a stern test from Kosovo's ever-improving Nora Jakova getting the win with an Uchimata Wazari to end the year as world number one. The under 70 kilogram division saw Nizoe Saki on form for Japan, as she produced some great judo en route to the final, taking out both Marie-Yves Gay of France and Puerto Rico's Maria Perez. In the final, she overcame triple world champion Yuri Alviar of Colombia by a Wazari. Great work from Nizoe. There was an all-Japanese final at under 78 kilograms, with former world champion Umeki Mami taking on Sato Ruika. A clever attack on the ground allowed Umeki to secure a pin, which she held to earn victory by Ippon. It meant she avenged a recent defeat to Sato in the final of the Osaka Grand Slam and took the initiative in their back-and-forth domestic rivalry. Touted for a bright future is Sone Akira, who took on Larissa Cherich of Bosnia-Herzegovina in the semi-finals of the over 78 kilogram division. Halfway through the contest, left against right here, Sonny left-handed, tries the Ouchi. Oh, and she skips across, a beautifully executed Siatoshi there from Sonny. And look at the cross grip, and she just skips across there. Cherich had no chance at all. Flat on her back, and Sonny is through to the final. Sone then defeated Cuba's Idalis Ortiz in the final to end the year as World Masters Champion. Our number three Ippon from Guangzhou came at over 100 kilograms as home fighter Yuan Xiaotong took on Korea's Kim Sung Min. Kim, already a Wazari up and now looking for the Uchimata, but look at that. Yuan trying for the Uchimata as well. It's left against right. Oh! What an early that was! That was absolutely huge. And I was just about to say that you can't attack that front leg without being strong. And that was super. Absolutely great stuff there by Yuan. And he goes through to the next round. Frank De Witt of the Netherlands faced Matthias Kasser of Belgium for under 81 kilogram bronze in a battle of the up and comers. What a long old battle this is. Two and a half minutes into golden score. Now, do it. He's going to commit. And they're both hooked up. And something is definitely going to happen here. These two are going to go for the Ippon. And that's not a good place for Kasse to be, I don't think, anyway. He's trying for the Kosoto. And that was brilliant stuff. Frank DeWitt knew it as soon as he climbed on top of it that he had the advantage. And I thought that Kasse was playing with fire there because he was hooked up. One of them was going to go, and in the end, it was Kase that gets thrown for a massive hip on. He pulls on the belt, look at the Kosota, but look how he climbs on top of it there, readjusts his weight, and then drives him over, flat on his back. Our number one Ippon came as Natalie Powell looked to take under 78 kilogram bronze for Great Britain when she faced Madeleine Malonga of France. The whole British team in support there, all supporting Natalie Powell of Great Britain. Halfway through the contest, and look at that, she commits again there, Malonga. Malonga now, oh, she led herself into that, and Natalie Powell was waiting for it. She wanted that arm round the back there, and it was almost, we saw her do it a couple of times throughout the contest. Look how she drops her hips. She drops them right the way under Malonga, and then she takes Malonga, the European champion, back flat onto her back. 
That was brilliant by Natalie Powell of Great Britain, and she adds the World Masters Bronze Medal to her World Bronze Medal. The smile on her face says it all, and she punches the air because she has done it. We finish with the women's under 63 kilogram division, which saw 2018 standout judoka in action. Clarice Agbegnanu became a triple world champion in Baku this year and was in action for the first time since then here in Guangzhou. At the semi-final stage, she faced a rematch of the world championship final against Japan's Toshiru Miku. Replay then of the world championship final and these two going hammer and tongs at it. But I think Agbegnanu for me is the one dominating and going for it. Oh, look at that, Harai Makikomi. And she scores a Wazari, and now trying to get that leg out. If she can get the leg out, she's through to the final. And Tashira went for it, actually, with the Osoto, but gets countered. And she was waiting for it there. She's so opportune this way. Agbeg Nanu just waits for the opportunity and then takes it. And she just wraps that arm up. Now Agbeg Nanu going forwards. Is she going to look for the Ippon? Or is she just going to block out? She's already a Wazari up. Now, attacking in Iwaza. Looking for the lapel. Trying to feed the hand through. She's going to try for the turnover, I think. Well, she's trying for the turnover, but looks like the shimmy was is on as well. And Toshiro has to submit. And that was a really unusual way of scoring with a shimmy waza. And she started off to do the turnover, but the uh, arm was underneath the neck and the strangle was on. And you can see it there, and the referee can see it quite clearly. That was really an unusual shimiwaza, and it takes her through to the final. Another Japanese challenger awaited the dominant Agbegninu in the final. Nabukura Nami proved tough opposition, with Agbegninu just millimetres away from securing the win in regulation time the match proceeded into golden score. So Mr. Marietta Visa looks on with great interest. What a match this is, into golden score. And well, she's been a mile ahead of everybody all year, Agbeg Nanu, but you've got to say, Nebukura is really taking the fight to her. Now then, oh well, did she try and throw her there? And she's dropped into the hold down there and she made a mistake there. Nabakura has fallen into the hold down and Agbeg Nanu is now holding up for the full hip on, I'm sure. I don't think she's going far from there. And that really was a mistake. But you have to ask, was it an attempted throw or was it Nawaza? But we'll see it again in slow motion. It was brilliantly taken by Agbeg Nanu. And Nabakura, well, she took the fight to the world champion, that's for sure. Already seen a teammate, Toshiro, lose in the semi-final. And now, look at this. Tries, I'm sure, for the throw, but, and well, she falls into the hold down there. Did she touch the leg or not? And I'm sure there'll be a little bit of debate, but it was brilliant transition into Newaza anyway from Agbeg Nanu. And she finishes the year absolutely on top. She's been undefeated and she's looked a mile ahead of everybody all year. Agbeg Nanu showing that she really is a great champion. So the 2018 World Judo Tour comes to an end. It's been a year which has seen the emergence of some phenomenal talent. We've seen crowns defended and crowns taken. There's been emotion, the kind which only sport can produce. It's been a year of universality, of fair play and integrity. Join us in January for the start of another action-packed year on the World Judo Tour.